You ever get to the end of the year, look at your finances and think, well, that didn't go as planned. You feel like the year's goals are slipping away and you're playing catch up. Well, guess what? Good news. You have five weeks of the year left and Larry and I are morphing <laughs> into turbo mode to revamp and ramp up our finances. Every year at this time of the year, mm -hmm. Hope and I look at our finances and make sure that we're not just spinning our wheels mm -hmm. or not making our goals or making any progress or, toward those goals. Or worse yet, going backwards on the goals. <laughs> We have a specific process, several steps that we take, and that's what we'll talk about in this video. So grab your partner if you have one, get ready to take notes, and let's talk about end of the year finances. If you don't know us, I'm Larry. And I'm Hope. And we're from Under the Median, where every week we bring you videos on practical frugality. So let's dive right in. These are the exact steps that we've taken every year for probably the past 20 years at least to give us the best chance of gaining some forward momentum, even though there are just five weeks left in the year. Step number one, assess your current financial situation. Usually we do this in November. Look guys, you've been through most of the entire year, so it's easy when it gets to November to just look at your expenses from January through October. That's mm -hmm. 10 out of 12 months of the year. And what that does, if you will average those first 10 months of expenses, it tells you on average what you've been spending every month of the year leading up to those last two months of the year. It gives you kind of a benchmark so you can see how mm -hmm. close you are to being on target. You want to take this time to review your income sources. And that would be, of course, your main source of income, which would be your job. And also maybe some side hustles side that hustles. you've done. Take a look at those. How much money have you brought in maybe each month or mm -hmm. for the entire January through October time period? And then you can use these as benchmarks to assess how much money will be coming in between now and the full end of the year. If you're paid every other week, if you're paid bi-weekly, don't forget that sometimes you're going to receive two extra bonus paychecks each year. This is generally true in months that have five weeks in them. So we always knew when Larry was paid twice a year, we were going to get that magical time of the year <laughs> when we would get three paychecks in one month. Now, we never budgeted on those two extra paychecks mm -hmm. that were coming in. Those were just additional money that we could put toward goals. So if that's the situation you're in, determine whether you're going to be getting any of those extra third paychecks between yeah. now and the end of the year. And the other thing to take into consideration is do you get end of the year bonuses. If you do, go ahead and estimate what that bonus is going to be, and it's better to underestimate rather than overestimate. So what you're going to wind up with is a list of income between now and the end of the year, how much you expect to be coming in from each of those sources we just discussed, your regular paycheck, any side gigs, and any additional money that may be coming your way between now and December 31st. So once you've analyzed your income, then you need to look at your outgoing money, your expenses. Analyze your fixed expenses. And we're talking like things like utility, mm -hmm. rent, maybe a mortgage payment. And also take a look at your unfixed expenses like groceries, mm -hmm. anything that can vary a little bit, you can change the, uh, the amount. Those would be your unfixed expenses. What this allowed us to do was to set up a very specific game plan between mm -hmm. now and December 31st. We had a really good map figured out by the time we knew exactly what our income was, what our expenses were going to be. Then we could make plans for using any additional money we had left over in order to play catch up on the goals that we had written in January that we may not have made as much progress on as we wished that we had made. So basically, you're looking at what items can be lowered. Mm -hmm. Those are the adjustments that you want to do for the end of the year to have the best possible year. Along with this, take a look at your debts, maybe mm -hmm. your credit balances, anything that you're going to be owing money on. Take a look at that and consider that too in your income. Maybe there's a way to pay those off faster and actually give yourself a raise. Now that you have a really good plan, you have a map in place that shows you what your current financial situation is, you're going to move on to step two. And that is, you're going to set some very clear 
priorities. Mm-hmm. It's my favorite word in the whole <laughs> wide world. You guys know it. Say it with me. Everything is going to be prioritized. You look at that list that you just made and determine, does that list and those expected expenses, do they match up with what my priorities are. You want to make sure that you rearrange that list, putting those items all the way at the top Mm -hmm. that are most important to you and you work your way down the list to those things which could be cut back or even cut out between now and the end of the year. What happens is people get to these last four or five weeks of the year and they despair. They think, well... I didn't do well. This was a a, just a poor year financially and I can't play catch up. The truth is, yes, you can. Even with the impending possible expenses of the holiday season, and you should, by the way, have a very complete budget set out for the holiday season. Even with those expenses, you can still save money in December and you can still play catch up on your goals. When Hope talks about a budgeted time for holiday expenses, like your Christmas Mm -hmm. expenses, that should be a fixed amount that you've already planned on spending for all of your family, all your friends, your coworkers for their gifts for Christmas. Hey, speaking of gifts, guys, uh, I have a free resource that I can offer you. If you're still out there and you're still looking for Christmas gifts and you need to have that list completed, I have a free Christmas gift list ebook and I'll make sure that there's a link to that in the description of this video for you. Speaking of Christmas, make sure that you create a budget that has these expenses Mm -hmm. allocated so that once again, you're not going to be surprised by these unseen money expenses Mm -hmm. that will kind of creep up on you at the end of the year if you haven't planned for them. And that is step three. It's to make sure that you have created a budget which takes into consideration end of the year expenses. In order to help cut your budget for the end of the year, make sure that you trim off unnecessary expenses. If you don't have to spend the money, don't do it between now and December 31st. So you've created an entire game plan. You know your income, you know your anticipated expenses. You have created a a budget that takes into consideration all of the end of the year expenses, the holiday expenses, and you have trimmed wherever you can. Now the next step is to take advantage of year end sales and discounts. As you look at your list, what on that list, are you able to fulfill that need by finding items that are on sale? Let me give you an example. It's it's always challenging, I think, in the Christmas season because you're doing a lot more entertaining, you're doing a lot more baking, you're doing a lot more taking things to parties, and that can really stress your grocery budget. But when you take into consideration that you can often find baking supplies on sale in December, you know when you get to mid-November, you make a mental note and say, I'm gonna start watching the ads because I know chocolate chips are going on sale, sugar is going on sale, flour is going on sale. All three of those items I needed for holiday baking and all three of them I found on sale at a super price within the last two weeks. So make sure that you're aware of those sales cycles and when the items that you need are likely to go on sale between now and the end of the year and make sure that you're taking full advantage of those discounts and those sales because that will help you in order to reach your goals and stick to that budget that you just created. If you find that you do actually have some extra money in your budget, make sure that you maximize your retirement or any taxable contributions that you can make that will actually in the long term save you money. And if you want some help to maybe juggle through some of that, you might want to get together with a financial advisor Mm -hmm. who can look over your situation very carefully and recommend some allocation for Mm -hmm. your funds to go into. Step number seven, you want to make sure while you're looking at this prioritized budget that you are taking into consideration using some of those savings toward your emergency fund. If you do not have a basic emergency fund of, well, Dave Ramsey, our buddy says $1,000, we say $2,000, whichever you want to use, if you don't have at least that much money saved up, really some of the money that you're saving in November, December needs to go toward your emergency fund. 
But even if you don't have a fully funded three to six month emergency fund, you might consider taking a percentage of that money that you're able to save in November and December, especially guys, if you have that magic a uh, third paycheck coming in, if you have a bonus coming in, if you know for sure that you're getting ready to sell some items, any of that money that comes in, the temptation is to spend it freely on Christmas gifts. But remember, we just told you, you're gonna have a firm budget in mind for Christmas, the entirety of Christmas, and you're not gonna overspend that budget. <laughs> but you instead are gonna take part of that whole amount that you have set aside uh, that you're saving in November, December, and you're going to put a yeah. portion of that, a percentage of that toward that emergency fund, be that the beginning emergency fund or the three to six months emergency fund. And then the next thing you should do is plan for the year ahead. Mm -hmm. Basically, you're going to take the lessons that you've learned from this year and apply them to next yeah. year. What are some things maybe that you didn't foresee? Now you can take those things into consideration and plan better for the following year. One of the worst things to do when you are budgeting is to live in what we call the land of regret. Yeah. Regrets don't get you anywhere. Mm -mm. They make you sad, but they don't help you on your way. Learning lessons from what you did uh, that did not help you move forward toward your financial goals, those lessons are gold because they can help yeah. you to change the way that you're handling your money and do better next year. This life is all about slow, steady, forward steps. We seldom go from point A to point Z all in one <laughs> big, giant leap. It right. just doesn't happen. We take small, sequential, deliberate forward steps. So even if 2023 did not turn out exactly how you would like it to financially, that doesn't mean that you need to stay stuck where you're at. You can look at what you did and change the way that you behave with money moving forward into 2024. And by following these steps, you can then make some corrections for the mm -hmm. following year mm -hmm. and make some major improvements for your financial situation. Now, as you know, on this channel, we talk about frugality all the time because we love the idea of using frugality as a tool to get from where you're at to where it is that you want to be. But we really believe that as an entirety, frugality is going to be necessary for everyone in 2024. Yep. There are reasons that we really think this, and we talked about those in a video. Take a look at our reasons why we think frugality is necessary in the upcoming year. Watch that video and tell us in the comment section what you think.